Now, for more on this, we're joined by Derek Pitts in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute Science Museum. Thanks so much for speaking to us here on TRT World. Now, what are we hoping to learn? And as an astronomer, or chief astronomer, what particularly interests you? There are actually two aspects about this that are very interesting. One is the Chinese interest in better understanding the composition and internal structure of the moon by landing in this particular location. Uh, they hope to be able to understand or better understand why this side of the moon is somewhat different from the near side of the moon. So that's a, a, a great sort of science objective to have. At the same time, uh, the Chinese are building their experience at space exploration uh, with a goal of uh, working towards a more permanent uh, presence in Earth orbit. And how different would you say, if you know at all, is the far side of the moon, also known as the dark side? If we look at the far side of the moon, we find that the far side of the moon is heavily cratered and doesn't have anywhere near as many of the large, open, flat regions that we refer to as mare. When you look up at the moon, you see these open, uh, wide open, flat surfaces. And the far side of the moon doesn't have as many of those as the near side of the moon does. It also has one of the largest impact craters in the solar system, one of the largest and oldest impact craters in the solar system. The hope is that by studying this region, we can better understand not only the, the early history of the moon, but hopefully understand a bit more about the early bombardment periods in the uh, early history of the solar system as well. And earlier I mentioned that there could be some challenges. What challenges at all do you foresee? Well, the first and foremost challenge is, of course, being able to land on the far side of the moon successfully. This is going to be done autonomously in that there will, we won't have the opportunity for direct communication with the spacecraft as it's landing. Since it is on the far side of the moon, that means it will present a challenge for that alone. And then just existing on the surface of the moon for long periods and being able to operate, there will be a communication satellite placed in a stable orbit uh, about 60,000 kilometers above the surface of the moon that will be able to directly communicate with Earth. But still, it's a challenging environment, although the Chinese do have some experience at working on the moon. So uh, the challenges that they see uh, will be challenges that they probably have had some, uh, some, some, some problems with before or have worked with before and hopefully will be able to surmount them without too much difficulty. And you mentioned that China's experience, uh, how does China's experience compare to Russia's or the EU's or the U.S.? Well, in many ways, China is catching up with the other spacefaring nations. Uh, right now, the United States, along with uh, Russia and a number of European countries, as well as Japan, uh, have uh, this wonderful facility, International Space Station, which has been operating success successfully now for uh, 20 years. And so the Chinese would like to be able to extend their experience in low Earth orbit with a permanent space station as well. One might think that their goal would be to place people on the moon, Taikonauts on the moon sometime soon, but that's in their long-term plans. Uh, there's no real time frame established for this just yet, but what we do know is that the Chinese have done very well at uh, gaining experience at working in low Earth orbit by establishing uh, orbiting stations. And now we're looking for this opportunity to create a permanent orbiting station uh, orbiting above Earth. Fantastic. Looks very interesting. Let's see how, uh, how it all develops. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. That was uh, Derek Pitts. Uh, he's the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute Science Museum.